Okay, so who's Dmix? Um, why would you want to use this? What does it do for us? So when you have numbers in a program, they can represent all kinds of different things. Uh, if you just have a double, that in itself doesn't tell you very much about uh, what it's supposed to represent. So with the boost units library, you can add more information about that. So here we're saying that x is 10 meters, not just 10. This helps make the code more understandable because all more information about what the variables mean is embedded into the code itself, so it's right there for you. Uh, it's also done in a way that the compiler can understand. So this increases type safety because the compiler can catch you if you try to do something that doesn't make any sense. So in this example, so if we try to convert x, which is meters, to seconds, the library doesn't like that and it's going to complain bitterly. Um, in addition, if you're using different units that are compatible, like in this case, feet, if you try to convert x to feet, then the library is smart enough to know that it can do that and it needs to convert by uh, 3.28. So now f has holds 32.8 feet. If we were just using doubles, it would either do the wrong thing and compile, or we'd have to add extra scaffolding to make sure mm -hmm. that it works manually. A yes. question, um, the SI length time, those are predefined types, so? Yes. <coughs> um, the SI length, SI time, and the foot unit thing are all predefined by the library. Um, all right. So, basic concepts used by the library are dimensions and units. Dimension is a fairly abstract thing, like length, mass, time, uh, pressure, energy, force, and so on. Um, a unit is a more concrete expression of a dimension. Every unit has a dimension associated with it. You can have many units that correspond to any given dimension. So, meters and feet, inches, uh, miles are all units of length. Seconds, hours, days are all units of time. Millimeters of mercury is a unit of pressure. Kilojoules is a unit of energy. Yes? Should dimension really be scalar? They're really scalars. Uh, it's not very confusing dimension for... Um, yeah. Oh, I see. Dimensional analysis. <coughs> okay, yeah. I just mentioned as in dimension. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sorry. So, how are we going to represent, let's start with dimensions, how are we going to re represent them in, a program, in the program? So first of all, this is all template metaprogramming, so of course it's going to be represented as a type. What can we do with dimensions, first of all? Well, we can test whether two dimensions are the same. Now, for this library, what we're going to do is require that two dimensions are the same, if and only if they're exactly the same type. I know that's not how the, it's done in the example of the MPL book, but the advantages of doing it this way are, first of all, it's used, dimensions are used all over in the library. So by forcing uniqueness, we limit the number of template instantiations. So that's kind of important when you have all this heavy template metaprogramming. It also makes it a lot easier to define overloads and specializations that work for any unit with a specific <coughs> dimension. Other operations that we can do are multiplication. So if you have length times length, that gives you area. Division, like meter, uh, length per over time is velocity. And you can combine them in any way you want. Since we have multiplication, we, we can allow powers as well. So length cubed is uh, volume. That's pretty straightforward. Um, so, to satisfy all these requirements, what we're going to do is use a list of the tags and exponents. So, for example, force is now going to be represented as uh, mass times length divided by time squared. That. So, when we define a base dimension, this is the 
tag that we're using. Um, we use CRTP, it's just a struct. Uh, the first tuple parameter is just the base, is just the base dimension itself. The second parameter is an integer. That has, every base dimension has to have a unique integer to identify it. Um, this isn't necessarily ideal, but it's the best we could come up with. So in order to make sure that the lists are unique, all the tags have to come in the same order all the time. So we use that integer to sort by. Um, once we have a base dimension, we can create a dimension by using this make dimension list meta function. So this <coughs> creates length squared, and that's just typed up to area. Now, units, they're kind of act pretty similar to dimensions. We can use the same, pretty much the same operations on them. So, it shouldn't be a surprise that the representation is fairly similar. Uh, conceptually, we're just going to use a list of base unit tags and exponents. Um, so when we define the base unit, again we have CRTP and a unique integer. You don't have to have them unique across dimensions and units. They just have to be unique within all units and within all dimensions. Um, and we have one extra parameter, which is the second parameter, meter dimension. Uh, shoot, that should be length dimension. What was that last? Uh, the one is. Yeah, the second parameter should be length dimension, not meter dimension. Oh, okay. Uh, that's just the uh, dimension of that unit, since meters is a unit of length. Uh, now, there's, for a unit, we have another representation, which is often more convenient, which is to use a system, which is just a set of base units, and then a, a dimension, and then what the let the library figure out how to get that dimension from the system. So, here is a more an example of creating a system. This is kind of a weird system. So, you, pretty much the library doesn't care. You can pick any base units you want, no matter how weird. It just doesn't care what you do. So here we're using millimeters of mercury, electron volts, and grams. Uh, we use the make system meta function, which is just variadic. I think it's up to 10, but it will eventually be very, fully variadic. Um, and that creates a system. With that system, we can define a unit of time. So the first parameter to the unit class is the dimension, the second is the system. Now, when we print that, we end up with, with uh, millimeters, the unit of time in that system is millimeters of mercury to the negative one third elect times electron volts to the negative one sixth times grams to the one over two. Of course, this is pretty complicated, and you really don't want to work it out by hand, right? But fortunately, the library can <coughs> handle it all. So I actually just ran this to figure out what it did, what it was. <laughs> can, can you uh, override it to print out a simpler name for uh, certain things? Yes, you can. I was getting. Okay. I'll get there later. later. So, what, what is this system again? I... Okay, so basically a system is just a set of base units. Okay. So, so in here, uh, we say we define our base unit tags, then we define the system to be the set of all of those three. All right. Yes. So. So some standard systems that you might be familiar with are things like grams, centimeters, seconds. Uh, yeah, CGS, SI. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are pre SI and CGS are predefined. Got it. Now, there's one thing you have to be a little bit careful with. When I was originally working on creating this example, I tried using um, pints instead of grams. Now, this is actually a doesn't work very well, because let's take a look at the dimensions of these units. So millimeters of mercury is unit of pressure. Electron volts is a unit of energy. Pints is a unit of volume. But 
we know that volume times pressure is the same dimension as energy. So the result of that is if you try to do this, you, the, there's no longer a unique way to get specific dimensions, so it's just forbidden. They have to be, in, all the units you use have to be independent. Get well, <laughs> yeah, not so much. Not, not so much. You just get well. You you end up deep down inside the library when you end up with a singular matrix. <laughs> I think I put a comment right before the line saying explaining what where the error occurs. But okay, so conversions are. Let's see, going on to versions. Um, pretty much it should just work as long as you have units of the, with the same dimensions. So you can convert inches to meters. Um, there's a convenience function called conversion factor, which takes two units. And so in here, con the conversion factor from meters to feet is uh, 3.28 or what, whatever it was. Right, something like that. Yeah. I actually, I looked this up and it was on an earlier slide, so I should remember it. Um, so, to allow conversions, we have to specify how to, we have to give the library a certain amount of information to work with. So, we use the macro boost units to find conversion factor, which has to appear in the global namespace. Um, it takes, <coughs> So this example defines the conversion from feet to meters and says that's 0 0.3048. Um, in, when you're dealing with conversions like this from one base unit to another, you, it'll automatically figure out the conversion from meters to feet, so you don't need to specify both ways. Um, this boost units default conversion thing is used as a fallback if it can't, if there's no direct conversion. So the idea is it'll, the library will try to convert directly between the units it's dealing with. If it doesn't, it'll generally fall back on converting everything to SI and going through that. That way, it's as accurate as possible, but it will always work somehow. Um, it, all the conversions for more complex units are built up from the conversions from uh, base units only. Yes. And that all the math happens at compile time, right? So it's yes. always so the runtime is always multiplies. Well, yes. Assuming that the compiler can do all the inlining and constant folding, it should resolve to a multiplication by a constant. Yes. Yes. Is, is does the library handle like temperature where there's an offset? Yes, it does. I, there's actually a slide on that later. Okay. okay. Converting from Kelvin to Fahrenheit. Yeah. Could you go back one slide? Back a slide. You're going to. Yes. So I guess I kind of missed where quantity is coming in. Oh, so quantity is a class template. It just takes the first parameter is a unit. The second parameter is the value type. It defaults to being double. Oh. So okay. that's just how we tie units into actual runtime values. Oh, okay. So you could have. Uh, a quantity that's irrational or uh, yeah, so a big int or something like that as right. well. Right, okay. exactly. Okay, so you were just asking about temperature units. So <coughs> if you want to deal with absolute temperature points, like say it's 65 degrees Fahrenheit out, then you need to use the um, wrap the unit in absolute. So, um, I mean, you can use temperature units without having absolute. It makes perfect sense to have something like mm -hmm. uh, millimeters per degree Fahrenheit. So, but if you want to deal with specific temperature <coughs> points, <coughs> absolute. It's kind of like the difference between in boost state time, you have the time duration in P time. Pretty much the same thing. I, don't, I guess I'm losing the difference, I'm sorry. But can you explain that a little bit? Okay, so, uh, like, 
if you have the conversion, you know the conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit is uh, 9 fifths C plus 32, yeah. Yeah. right? So if you're just dealing with something like something ex expands by so many meters for every degree Fahrenheit, then you only need the 9 fifths part. Oh, and that, it, that's when you use plain Fahrenheit. Right. But if you're dealing with uh, 0 degrees Celsius right. is the same as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, then you use absolute. Gotcha. So, in this case, what is Fahrenheit? What is its type? So, the type of Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit is a unit. Uh, it's a specialization of the unit class. Oh, okay. And then, so absolute is like a quantity? Absolute is a class template that, again, it, it, acts, it acts kind of like a unit. You can use it in the same way you would use a unit, pretty much, except it's more restricted because, well, you can use addition and subtraction, but you can't multiply them together, you can't divide them, no exponents. So I could then have a quantity of absolute Fahrenheit. Exactly. Okay. And then also a quantity of Fahrenheit directly. Right. Yeah. So I think I kind of I kind of get why there's there's no multiplication. Like how would you how would you take an absolute Fahrenheit and get like an average temperature, right? Wouldn't you wouldn't you need division there or uh, okay, so if you have yeah. Um, if you have two of them, then you just have to use a slightly different formula. But so there's, there's like, so you mean there's a special function or something? I mean, like? no, there, there isn't. I mean, average is kind of hard because the intermediate results are not dimensionally correct. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So I, it's possible to do it with some funny math. I think. <laughs> if, I mean, if you rearrange it, it's possible to make it work. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, so, so are these an affine space such that if you subtract two absolutes, you get a Fahrenheit? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So See, that's how you do the, the average then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I, can I make an absolute meter and have a coordinate space? Where well, the absolute meter is my coordinate and the meter would just be distance? I, yeah, you could do that, I suppose. Uh, would I have to do anything special, or can I just say absolute meter? Well, you could say you could you could just say absolute meter. The thing is, it's it's not that would work. You wouldn't be able to do any conversions unless you without extra scaffolding with the conversion offset macro. Oh, it doesn't default to zero. Huh? The offset doesn't default to zero. Oh uh, so no, it doesn't. For absolute meters to absolute inches, and assume the same origin. No. I'd have to set that up myself. It, you, you just have to explicitly set that to zero. Okay. Um, yeah, so the uh, defined conversion offset macro is used pretty much like the uh, defined conversion factor, so you just need to use, use both of them in order to enable conversions. Um, uh, one other kind of so we can also define some units in terms of other units by applying metric prefixes. Uh, like, so centimeters, millimeters, kilometers, and all the rest are all defined in terms of meters. So the act like kilometers is actually defined is we use the scaled base unit template. We pass the meter base unit to it. So that's what we're basing it off of. And we use the scale template, which has a base of 10 and an exponent of 3. We can also apply scales, scaling to it, an entire unit. So for that, use the meta function make scaled unit. And that just takes a unit and the scale as before. And we get megajoules out of that. Now, for IO, we only allow output. Uh, we didn't really want to deal with parsing units since that's kind of a complex task, mm -hmm. and the library is already quite big enough. <laughs> so there are a couple of options for how the units are printed. You can use this symbol format, which uses the brief abbreviations K, G, M, S, uh, or you can use the name format, which spells out the names of the units in time. Why yeah. would just say Newton? What? <laughs> Why would that's, that's, that's a couple slides later.
Because the thing is, it's it breaks it down into base units by default unless you override it. You get some weird kerning there. Hmm? I, I first first time I read that I, I read format as form space at. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. There's kind of a space there, isn't there? Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if we want to use prefixes, the library will automatically add them. So if you have mega and kilograms, it'll convert that to the prefix for giga. Gigagram. I mean, it's kind of an odd unit, but why not? Um, if you, you can also tell the library that you want it to apply prefixes automatically. So if you use the stream manipulator engineering prefix, it will scale it so the value is between, has uh, at most th three digits before the decimal point. Uh, so in here, if you have uh, 12,345 meters, it'll print 12.345 kilometers. If you have it bigger, it'll turn to megameters, gigameters, terameters, all the way up to uh, whatever 10 to the 24 is, <laughs> yeah. which is the highest metric prefix. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. <laughs> So in order to allow this for base units, when we define the base unit, you add a couple static numbers to provide the uh, name and the symbol. Uh, we, don't, we didn't provide local, any kind of localization support. Um, again, the library is quite big enough. <laughs> and I mean, now that, we have, now that there's a locale library accepted, we might revisit this at some point in the future, since this is kind of a message translation-like task. You can also, also if you don't have that, if you can't change the definition of the base unit, you can specialize the uh, base unit in the template to provide the names. Now, if we want to, as you were asking, if you want to print uh, Newtons instead of the ex expansion in base units, uh, you overload the functions name string and symbol string for that unit. They have to be, they have to, it has to be possible to find it by argument dependent lookup. So it may have, so you, you may have to put it in the boost units namespace. Um, you'll notice that we're using the reduce unit meta function here. Uh, remember that I said earlier we had multiple representations for units, so they're not necessarily unique. So by using the reduced unit meta function guarantees that if two units are the same, it will always return exactly the same unit. So it's a normalization function. Um, so if we didn't use that, it would work if you were using SI directly, but anything else would still use the default. And we might want that, but in this case, I've chosen to make uh, J and Joules used for everything whenever it's kilograms meters per second meters squared per second squared. Does that, does that answer your question about that? Yes. Um, no, go ahead. Okay. okay, so for compile time performance, um, I spent a fair amount of effort on this since Otherwise, it would just take forever to compile. <laughs> um, although it's probably degraded a bit over the last few years as I've been applying bug fixes and new features. But there, are, uh, in general, the, you can get the best performance if you're using if you try to use a single system like SI. That's pretty highly optimized for the template metaprogramming because the system can just get passed along as it is without any changes and the, the only metaprogramming is happening in the dimension and I've optimized that to death. Um, the, the thing that's really a killer for compi compilation time seems to be the conversions from what I've observed. So I'd recommend at least making sure that you don't instantiate the same conversions over and over again in different translation units unless you, unless you like destroying your compiler. <laughs> 
So for runtime performance, it's pretty much as good as we can possibly make it. Uh, quantity just contains a double, nothing else, and the <coughs> operator overloads just forward. It's, it may not be quite as efficient as using a plain double, but there's really nothing we can do about it. We have to use a class, we have to use operator overloads. When I was running benchmarks on it, I didn't observe any differences in the timings. Of course, I should add a disclaimer that I am not at all an expert in benchmarking, so it's quite possible that for some uses, it could be slower for using quantities. Um, even when I was looking at the disassembly, it was the variables were spilling onto the stack more when you were with quantities, but it just didn't affect the times. Um, then conversions, I already mentioned this, should just resolve to multiplying by constant. So, in general, it should be efficient. Uh, now, here's the, the biggest problem with using libraries. It generally does not play well with other libraries. Um, I know it does not work with uBlast. It does not work with accumulators. Which, the good news is it does work with the non-math libraries, like Lambda and Phoenix. Uh, for Lambda, you have to include a special header that provides the return type deduction. And Phoenix, not V2, but V3, mostly works. There's a small bug I need to deal with in, I think, the, for a few cases, but it should mostly work. Um, to, to actually make libraries compatible with units, you pretty much need to use decal type or boost type of everywhere to deduce the return type of all the arithmetic operators. And of course, no one does that because it's a pain, and units is the only thing that requires it. Actually, I'm not even sure that it's always a good idea to do that because um, if, you, if you do that, then you'll end up instantiating these templates for every different unit that you deal with, even though they're going to result in exactly the same code. So even if the compiler is smart enough to uh, combine all the uh, identical pieces of object code so you don't have that code load, it'll still be instantiating all these templates over and over and over again, and it's going to make things compile slowly. So at least if you're dealing with um, functions, I th think it's often going to be better to provide wrappers. Like, we've already done that for all the functions in CMath. Uh, this, I have no, I haven't really thought about how to adapt the best way to deal with classes like accumulators or uBlast but I'm not sure even that there is a good way. But for functions, you can define a wrapper. It's, it's reasonably type safe. By this I mean, once you define the wrapper, if you get its signature correct, then anyone using it, it'll just work and they don't have to worry about it. The types will be correct. The problem comes in when you're defining the uh, wrapper. Well, there's nothing protecting you from getting the types wrong. You have to manually specify everything. Um, I don't think this is a huge problem because there's, they're usually pretty small, there's nothing else to do, so you can focus on just getting that right once. But it's still, yes? What about conversion to and from this floating point? Is it implicit or do you have to? It's explicit. You can do it explicitly. So you... Yeah, except if, so if all the units cancel out, so you just have no units. Yeah, so it's dimensionless. Then it supports implicit conversions to and from the value type. What, what about things like angles? Uh, angles are a special unit. Okay. Yeah. So they because they're essentially uh, dimensionless, right? So yeah, but I, we have a unit for it. So okay. So it, but they do not have implicit conversion, right? From right, the, they do not. Okay. okay. You have both both types for angles. Uh, Degrees and yes, we have degrees and radians. The trig functions are overloaded for both. Yes. Um, so can you um, convert it? If, if I want to define a conversion to an interval type, let's say for my for my uh, persistent storage of the values, and I want it to be different for different kinds of units, can I do that? Um, I mean, 
In other words, they could be carrying around doubles, right? But yes. I, maybe I don't want to store doubles in, the, in my file. Maybe I want to round it to some integral okay. space. So basically what you'd want to do in that case is, is just overload your whatever function does that conversion for the different units. I mean, you'd be doing, you'd have to do that entirely yourself mm -hmm. anyway. So I'd, I'd create a new unit to convert to. Well, I, I mean. So if you can't directly use the units you have, then you would have to convert it to some other type and do your overloads on that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the other advantages of using wrappers are they limit the template number of template instantiations. The base library is only going you're only going to need the double version or maybe the float version. Probably not much more than that. And the best thing is it's totally non-intrusive. It works for libraries that have never heard of units and don't care about units whatsoever. And here's an example of, a quick example of how it's done. This is how floor is actually defined in cmath.hpp. Um, it's just overloaded for any, u any unit with any value type. Uh, you, Extract the value, pass it to floor. We have this using dance to make sure ADL works for user find types, and then just wrap it in a new quantity. Um, we have to use the static from value function because there's no constructor that takes a double directly. Um, we did this on the principle of trying to make things as explicit as possible. Since this, since the units library is all about being explicit. Um, now, there are a bunch of uh, things that the library already provides out of the box. It has base dimensions in uh, length, mass, time, temperature, angle, solid angle, current, intensity, and amount. Uh, of course, you can define your own. These should cover most cases. Um, there's a whole slew of base units. For example, the documentation contains the whole page that lists them. Yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, you have the SI and CTS systems. Uh, both of those have uh, a bunch of type depths and uh, static very, very and st uh, static constant units to make it easy to work with if you're just using SI. And there are metric prefixes and. I think in an earlier example, I was using mega uh, in one of the I.O. examples. They're just constants you can, you can multiply by to add a prefix. Um, and we have a bunch of typed constants, like electron mass, Avogadro's number, the speed of light, and so on, all with the correct units. And I guess that's all I have. Questions? Yes. Um, I had several. One is, um, can you change um, the underlying representation? Like if you want to use float instead of double, is there a template? Well, so quantity takes two template parameters, the unit and the value type. So instead of quantity uh, SI force, you'd say quantity SI force comma oh. float. Ah, OK. Um, my other question was, can you change um, Unit, can you use this to change unit system uh, from, let's say, let's say you want to change from metric to English, do you, you need to do a conversion between two different units? Right, right exactly. So you can just define the units whenever, when you try to construct one from another. If they have the same dimensions, it will try to convert. Exactly. So uh, what's the best way to add <clears throat> a new unit that's sort of an oddball, like nautical miles, for instance? Uh, I think we have nautical miles. Okay, well, uh, the nautical miles, as you have it defined, isn't, <clears throat> isn't working for my use case. I forget the exact reason why, but, but okay, so a better example. We have, um, we have a notion of amplitude, a notion of amplitude in decibels, okay? Those, those, are, those are two things that we definitely want to make sure the type system is picking up, that there's a difference between them, and there's a well-defined conversion and so forth. So uh -huh. um, what we did was we just created a new system and put those in the new system. 
Um, or actually, they might be in separate systems because essentially they're sort of different versions of the same dimension. Uh, and um, I'm just wondering, is there a better way than just creating a brand new system and then manually doing the conversions where you need them, or, or not manually, but I'm saying um, pro providing the specialization for the conversions where required? Okay, so uh, the con conversions for units pretty much only work when you have a multiplicative factor. Sure. So, what's your case? Well, I mean, you're, you could put arbitrary, I mean, you could, you could put the function, uh, the, you could ask the conversion function to uh, go look up um, the current stock trade price on the internet and then do the conversion that way. And you could put arbitrary code in there. And so what we did was we just did 20 log 10 for that code instead of a multiplication. Okay, okay so. <coughs> if we didn't do a factor, we did a, a, over, we did a specialization of the conversion function itself. Right, so if you're, if you're doing something like that, I think, yeah, so you, you have, yeah, you'd have to over, override, over, override the conversion at the lower level that's used to implement both units and absolute things. Yeah, and, and we did that. I'm, that's, that's not actually my question. My question is essentially like, let's say I just wanted to do the amplitude. Forget I said anything about amplitude dB. So if I just wanted to have amplitude as a new, um, essentially a new unit and a new dimension as well. Um, is there a better way to do it than just making a brand new system, making a new base demand chain, and making a new base unit for it, and they all live in their own little sandbox? Yeah, okay, so, yeah, what, <coughs> what you do is create the new base dimension, create the new base unit for that dimension, then you create a new system. Um, I mean, the systems are, the con a system <coughs> is closed, you, can, right. you can't extend it. Um, so, you just, it's, it's functional. You have to create a new system that has all the things in the old system plus whatever extra things you want. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's mostly going to be compatible. Like, if you use the constants, it'll implicitly convert because it'll say, oh, these are exactly the same unit. Okay. So, is, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> is there a way, um, so, so you'd have to repeat all the units. There's no way to say, like, it has all of these plus these, right? You'd have to manually repeat it. Like, can you use inheritance and say, it inherits from this system, so it has all of these plus these extra? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> would that be possible to implement, or? It, it would be trivial to implement because it's just a list. Right, yeah, it would can internally figure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know so, if it's actually implemented. Okay. So. Uh, can you comment about the data consistency? Let's say you take a gigameter and you convert it to nanometers and you run out of the double precision or you get some weird numbers when you convert back and forth. Do you get any compiler runtime warning? Or? Oh, so uh, the library doesn't try to deal with that. I mean, it, it tries to convert directly as much as possible. So to try to prevent going like from so you don't have one common system in case you're dealing with things that are way out, but it doesn't have anything special to deal with that. I mean, if you wanted to do that, uh, you could create a special value type that wraps a double and does all that checking. Light years and millimeters? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somewhat related to that, is there a sort of sanity check to make sure that it's self-consistent? Say, take the fine... Uh, 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 the fine, um, gee, I'm losing my mind. The fine energy, uh, the fine constant, um, fine energy constant. No, not it's not um, the fine something constant. It's e squared, I think, over H C, has, um, and it should be dimensionless. Okay. The so fine structure constant. Fine structure. Okay. You know, to, you know, to just to verify that everything is self consistent. Now, on the one, on the one hand, if you take E and C and and um, Planck's constant. And on the other hand, you should, uh, you should well, get dimensionless. Yeah, so then what you do is you take that formula and you assign it to a unit that's explicitly marked as dimensionless. If that compiles, then you know it's correct. Okay. Do we know, I mean, and so this does work then? It, it's, yeah, because, it right because if you try to assign and the dimensions don't match, it'll complain. Okay. And second question is, instead of having to manually enter uh, monotonic increasing numbers, Mm -hmm. Is there like some uh, singleton or whatever that you can just call, give me the next 
you know, trust me, we, we spent weeks arguing about this during, around the review. There, as far as I know, there is no solution. The reason you can't do that is because it has to be known statically at compile time. <coughs> And you can't use pre the preprocessor for this because it has to be stable across translation periods. Right. So you just use an enum, right? You can just use an enum, though, right? Like if you, you want to declare them all on the same place, then yeah. you can yeah. do that. Yeah, and, right. well, I, I spent oh, a great right, deal of effort making sure systems. that if, if you try to use the same integer in the same, multiple times in the same translation unit, it'll blow up. It does track that error. But you're saying it has to be stable across the same number of cross translation units, or just that it's unique within the translation unit? It has to, so if you have a base dimension, it has to have the same ID across all translation units. Otherwise, it'll because, merge them. Right. Yeah, because otherwise it won't play. Right. So what, what, is, what, what is this problem that we're trying to, I, I, I miss what we're trying to solve here. Okay, so not what we're trying to so solve, the, but why this. Yeah, so the what? thing is, we have to sort base, we have to sort the tags. So to do that, we, we use an integer key. I see. I mean, now that we have MPL string, I suppose you could use a string instead as a sort key. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't around when, when we originally got this in. We just exhaustively compare all permutations to see if it's actually the same, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Does it support directly serialization? Uh, yes, it does support serialization. Since it just holds a double, a, the value type, it just passes through. Anything else? I guess we're done.